and the deep end of this footage was edited to make it look like I am disconnected and cold and casual about people ending their life. I've seen some of your videos and I think, okay, yeah, I can do that. But then somewhere along the line, there's just no motivation to do anything. If I was to ask you right now, what is it going to take for you to be happy in life? What's your answer? Nothing. That's my problem. Nothing makes me happy. Like, nothing. And your truth is nothing's going to. Yes. I think I'm not sure even what anything feels like at this point. I don't know what I'm feeling. And why are you still here? I really don't know. <laughs> why did I come up here? I don't know. Because I'm trying to figure out... I'm really trying to figure out... Well, why me, I mean, why are you still here on the planet? It's like part of you is trying to find an answer and stay alive, and part of you is like, I'm just going to take us out. Oh, look, here's another issue. Oh, look, here's another issue. Until you die. People have a very understandable yet unnatural fear of death. You have somebody sitting in front of you that does not have a problem going to these places with you. Like when we're really facing that decision point. Play out both sides. I'm literally saying go to the worst of the worst case scenarios and make your mind up. None of us are going to get out of this thing alive. So the question is, if you knew that, what would you do different? Thank you so much. And here is what the actual interaction looked like. If I was to ask you right now, and the answer can't be, I don't know, just wing it, like intuitively, what is it going to take for you to be happy in life? What's your answer? Nothing. That's my problem. Nothing makes me happy. Like, nothing. And your truth is nothing's going to. Yes. Wow. Then why are you still here? I really don't know. That's <laughs> why did I come up here? I don't know. Because I'm trying to figure out, I'm really trying to figure no, out. Why that's the I mean, why are you still here on the planet? That's my question that I wake up every day and ask myself. And that's why you're so sick. <laughs> it's really morbid. <laughs> but well, it's, it's, it's... That's you know. why you're so sick. Just, th this is the f a difficult part. Is like when somebody gets to a place on a mental and emotional level, where that will to live, I know it's a feedback loop, but where that will to live just really doesn't exist. It's like part of you is trying to find an answer and stay alive, and part of you is like, I'm just going to take us out. Oh, look, here's another issue. Oh, look, is another issue? Until you die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's So it's a, it's a form of passive suicidality mm -hmm. is what I'm seeing. Yeah, absolutely. And I wear it every day. Like, I will admit that, that it's... Well, this is a bigger problem than, the, than where I thought we originally were here because you're, there is no possible way, whether it's relief or anything else, there is no possible way for you to get anywhere in this life unless you decide. I have a hard time deciding. So you're going to be stuck on the fence and sick forever? Yeah. That's my issue that I've, like, came to the right realization of, is that I can't even decide, do I want to do this? Well, can you stay on the fence anymore? That should have been what you did your thing about. <laughs> you know, the stuckness this morning. You remember the exercise where it's like, here's all your options, what are all the consequences in your stuckness, right? That was what was going through my head. So you, you did it, and if, I, if it stays like this, and I stay stuck, and I don't decide life or something else. I did, like, five scenarios because it's, it, I did, like, six different scenarios at once because it's so many different things. It's everything. That's why I couldn't even pick one because I couldn't even decide which one to do. <laughs> it's not everything. Yeah. It's live or die. Mm -hmm. I know that's difficult to hear, but you know you're there already. Well, who's to play with it? I mean, you have a rare opportunity here. You have somebody sitting in front of you that does not have a problem going to these places with you. People have a very understandable yet unnatural fear of death. It's strange to fear something everyone's going to meet with. Um, I think the reason why I'm so stuck is because my husband is 46 years older than me and is also not very well, and I'm constantly worrying about being a widow, so that's like my main problem, mm -hmm. which like I don't want to make it a sob story, but no, that's what it I'm is. making myself miserable, and I have a friend that 
I brought with me who, you know, lost his wife to cancer. And so I'm trying to surround myself with people who can positively understand it and help me in a way that's healthy. Mm -hmm. First time in my life, I'm like, okay, let's do something healthy. Let's not be, you know, unhealthy about it. But I'm still stuck, so. So you're, you're not wanting to stay here because of that, is what I'm hearing. I think that's part of it. How do, how do you live a life? Like, I chose this, right? Like, okay, I picked that person, I'm with that person. But how do you consciously stay aware that you've, you've chosen it? Because I think a lot of it is like, I don't even know what's going on. But you didn't choose to lose your husband. What, what are you choosing? I'm saying being married to someone who I already know is much older. Is it worth it? Yes. That's how. <laughs> it's that simple? Because in my head, it's very complicated. <laughs> the emotions are complicated, but it's that simple. Is it worth it? Yes. That's your answer. <laughs> it's that simple. <laughs> When I'm watching you, it's almost like you've got this... By the way, this is a trend I've noticed today. It, it's almost like there's a feeling that there should be a situation where you j just are able to feel good and there's able to be no contrast or else something's gone wrong. Mm -hmm. What the hell? <laughs> I can... Okay, this is what didn't happen before you came into this life. You didn't sit there in this limbo land before coming in and say, you know... I'm going to conditionally opt into that family knowing that I'm not going to incur any trauma whatsoever. And based off of incurring no trauma whatsoever, I'm going to get everything that I want. Wait a minute. Desire comes from contrast. Mm. Mm -hmm. I guess I want you to sit with that for a little bit. Desire comes from contrast. So the entire premise upon which you came in was dependent on the concept of unwanted. Nobody is going to get out of this without experiencing unwanted. It's about how you navigate the seas of unwanted. We've got to stop telling ourselves this narrative that unless life feels awesome 24 hours a day, we're doing something wrong. That's what I do. with the whole right and wrong thing. Like, I'm struggling with that. You know what I mean? I know there really isn't one, but... Oh, I'm going to set you guys free. All right, I want you, I'm going to say this. I want you to, like, when I say this, let it settle in your body. You are never, I mean never, going to find a situation where there is no contrast. <laughs> That's the, I mean, contrast is the premise upon which this time and space reality was designed. If you'll accept that, then you can pick your consequences. The power in that is this. All right, if I look at my life and I decide I want to be a professional surfer, what contrast am I looking at? Um... an image of them riding the waves. What's what's the contrast that comes with that? Injury. Shark. Sharks. There we go. Injury, sunburn, drowning, sharks. Okay, see. Um, what if I want to be a surfer, but I say, but the thing is, is like if you get wet, then you can't be surfing right. Or maybe you're like not meant to surf. Do you see the problem? You will never find a situation with no contrast. It's about which contrast you choose and why. What happens when you choose it and you know why you chose it and then you change your mind? <laughs> and then you don't know why you chose it anymore. <laughs> then you change your mind and you go somewhere else. Yeah, because I think there's a fear there. There's a fear of what if this is right 
but what if it's not right and I don't know the difference? <laughs> I think there's a lot of fear there. Fear of picking the wrong thing. Yeah. Is my question. There's nothing you can really do with fear. <laughs> There's everything you can do with fear. There's nothing you can do against it. I can tell you that. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to allow fear to do to you? Is the question that I have. Well, I did get to a point where I was like so afraid of this one thing that I was like, yeah, I'm just not going to be afraid anymore. Like, I just, I don't want to. Like, I just choose not to. Did it work? Like, 50% of the time. <laughs> I said no. <laughs> what, what would be, this is the thing, you, I know that we're averse to feeling. Nobody wants to lose their partner. The question is, is, is loving him worth it? Worth, worth, you know, the experience of really hurting. A lot of your pain is that feeling has been made so wrong across the course of your life that it's as if it's not bad enough that you would lose your husband. Now it's not okay to feel bad that you lost your husband. That's it. Because I have people that I know that are going to tell me, I told you so. I told you not to do X, Y, and Z. Do not spend time with those people. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That's my biggest problem, too. It's family. It's, it's family, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, that's cruelty at that point. Yeah, there's like about a whole handful of people that put themselves in a category of we don't go there, we don't talk to that person because of just the choice that I made to be with the person I'm with. Do you like your choice, though? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> because it's so hard. Like, sometimes it feels like it's not worth it. Like, how do you know that a choice that you're making is worth it when... You play you know? out the other side. Okay. The other side is I'm miserable and I'm alone. <laughs> For right now, anyway. Okay, so let's play that game. So you're miserable and alone for at least a little while. Mm -hmm. If that feels better, then do that. You get that, like, we don't play it out enough. We really should. We should be, you know, when we're really, and it's hard, but like when we're really facing that decision point, mm -hmm. play out both sides. Okay, well, how do you do that? Mentally. Go to the worst case. I'm literally saying go to the worst of the worst case scenarios and everything in between and make your mind up based off of what you see. We don't often play it out. It's like we're almost flirting, but like not really going there mentally, you know? That's what I've been doing, I think. You're going to be stuck forever there. you got to like deep dive. I mean swan dive into exactly what you're afraid about. Okay, how do you swan dive? <laughs> making fun I'm just how do you do that <laughs> okay if I'm gonna swan dive I'm going to play out the entire experience of me losing my husband okay, that's pretty terrifying yeah well that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna sit there almost like a conscious meditation and I'm going to go through every step of it in advance because that's your choice right you either stay with him or you leave mm -hmm. okay so then I do the same to the opposite side I picture myself you know exiting. I look at what I'm going to do, probably time by myself. I look at what I think is on the other side of that. I look at how I feel about the fact that I left him, like uh, all of these different dynamics. And based off of really staring that tiger in the face, you'll be surprised because your personal truth will come up and it's like, I already know what I'm going to do. But I already know what I'm going to do comes with pain. It's worth it. That's what I mean when I say choose your contrast. <laughs> you know? Those are like very two extremes. That's the thing. Yeah, but you can't. I can't contrast. even talk to you about what you're gonna because you're like you're already arguing about. Yeah, I am. <laughs> that arguing is an avoidance strategy. <clears throat> Do you see that? Do you know what I think is 
interesting. I need to mention something for this group. <laughs> Just tell me where you land with this. I have noticed something recently that humanity loves to tell the story that if you have found your partner or your mate, they won't die or you won't lose them. It's not true. No, everyone loses their partner. I want you to sit with that for a minute because it may not be the Disney story, right? But I mean, we, this is what we say to our girlfriends, right? When they like have a guy that breaks up with them or a person that dies, we're like, look, there's somebody who is meant to be even better for you. Otherwise he wouldn't have died. <laughs> Unless you are the very rare person who has opted into a kind of soul contract where you die at the same moment as your partner. We're looking at 99.9% .9 of people who will lose their partner. I think it's because they taught Romeo and Juliet in schools. I think it screwed people up. That's just my opinion. <laughs> How many people here know somebody, a couple that died at the same time? It's not realistic, right? No, it's not realistic. <clears throat> but I, I find this strange that we have a different relationship a very different relationship to when partners die in the 20s than when partners die when they're in their 80s. And it's bizarre for me. I mean, I don't know anybody else in my situation. Well, I do know one person, but she's miserable, so. <laughs> it's, you know? Most people who are looking at what you're looking at are much older than you. Mm -hmm. How about instead of making it, it's like you're judging yourself relative to the loss of a partner about your age and his age. Yes. Stop doing that. Make it about the loss of a partner, period. doesn't matter whether you're 80 and 90 or 20 and 70. Like, it's about the loss of a partner. And I can promise you there are plenty of people who go through that. I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, I think I just needed to... I don't think you were wrong for the choice to marry this person. Really? No. That's a big one. That's like... That's a big one. I think that's probably the only reason I came up here, and that might be selfish, but that's like all I needed to hear, really. Well, I'm telling you the truth, not just because I want you to feel good. Because I've been told so many times, bad choice, wrong choice, you're going to be a widow, you're going to be pushing him in a wheelchair. It's just rough. Well, and some women will be cheated on and have their money taken and never find a partner. And I mean, <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. yeah, choose your consequences. I think you chose right. It will be painful. It's going to be very painful. <laughs> But so is half the shit the 20 year olds are going for making the right choice. So, oh <laughs> take that. That helps me too because when you, when you just said that, one of the things that I try to remind myself is, and I don't know if this is healthy, but I think about friends my age or even a little bit older, and I think, okay, what are they doing and what am I doing? And then I think, wow, I'm in a really good place because I have this. And they're out drinking and partying, <laughs> which is fine, but I'm doing spiritual work. I'm doing that instead with somebody who's teaching me how to do it. Nicely done. <laughs> so I decided it's worth it. <laughs> I think I just needed to decide, like I needed to... You just needed to decide that it's worth yeah. it. Have That's you decided awesome. that? Mm -hmm. I've I decided. <laughs> I agree. I'm sorry. I agree. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>